I, I haven't had these, made these statements, thoughts, whatever, yet, so I'd rather be casual okay. and concise. So what can you tell me about Zen and the art of the theory of process? That isn't what I wanted you to start with. What's this? Uh, what, what, okay. Why is it you want to talk about Zen? Okay. Uh, Arthur, why, why is it you want to talk about Zen? Well, it's been bothering me of late because people don't seem to get the theory. And, and then I had to think back, and I realized that I'd had not just one, maybe two doses of Zen philosophy, once when I was in college, and then again when I was uh, changing over from the helicopter and reading Suzuki and so forth. Mm -hmm. what, what do you know about Zen? No, oh, just what I read from Alan Watts. Well, that's, that's pretty good, but how, how does it, does it affect your approach to life? Mm, not consciously. Well, it, it did have a profound effect on me. See, what, what Zen is saying is that you can't say it. There's something uh, more important than the things you can put out in communicable form. And yet the whole of Western thought is based on putting things into communicable form. And, and this leads to, uh, well, it's, it explains why it's so, so, uh, so interesting to go into Zen, where the Zen art of motorcycle maintenance. That, that was a bestseller just on its title. It's no help for motorcycles, and it's not much help for Zen. But it shows the power of that uh, thought now. But... Uh, People don't bring their Zen when they come to study my theory. <laughs> they should have a pocket Zen available. <laughs> Realize that the essence is not communicable. Of course, that's what I'm talking about in level one. And uh, the, the difficulty is that, like everything else, they try to concretize everything, and then they don't get the feel of it. And you know yourself how with us, once you get the feel of it, you've got it. It doesn't matter much about the definitions and stuff. So, have, uh, I've said why I think it's important. I should say why, what Zen adds that you don't have otherwise. And that's very hard to say. How could I convey it to you? I mean, uh, do you get anything from what I'm saying now? What Zen adds to our understanding of the theory? Yes. Well, I think most people who come to hear about the theory come expecting to hear a scientific presentation, which is why they don't wear their Zen hat. Right. Um, so, it will, just what you said, if they brought their Zen manual with them and, and, and bore it in mind, it would help to understand those aspects that you're trying to bring in. Well, you see, I'm also saying it about science, that science has, has a Zen core, but they don't know it. Uh, it would pay, well, when they have to call the photon a virtual particle, virtual means something you can't see, and uh, what is it that can't be seen? That's uh, that's exactly what the Buddha is. The Buddha that can be seen is not Buddha. Mm -hmm. uh, did I tell you the story about burning the idols? No. The, uh, man, uh, the monk was cold in the monastery, so he cut up one of the Buddha's statues, wooden statues, and was burning it. And the guards came around and said, what are you doing there? And he said, well, I'm distilling the essence of Buddha from the wooden statue. And the guard said, don't you know there's no essence of Buddha in the wooden statue? And the monk said, well, uh, yes, that's right. Let's burn them all. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, then another one that I thought was funny, I I could try to remember, it was something, everything in Japanese is Suzuki or Sukaki or Sokiaki <laughs> or something, but this was not Suzuki, it was something like that, Sokaki or something. A group in New York, in the center of New York, uh, doing homage to the great master Sokiaki. And uh, in the... Uh, meditation room was a picture of Sokiaki tearing up a picture of the Buddha <laughs> to demonstrate this principle right. that there's no essence in the picture. But they were all sort of worshipping this picture of him tearing up the picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to draw the line you can't draw lines in, in, in the true essence. And for that reason, ordinary life is very Zen, but not when you try to analyze. At any rate, I hope that would clarify my point. This has worried me. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say that the heart of science has this, this photon, which is very Zen, which you can't see, and, you, and which is not objective. Um, I think you're crediting science. Or, I mean, it's the heart of the universe that has this photon. It's not, you're right. It's not you're science right. that has but it. Science doesn't even owe, recognize it. We owe it to science for having pointed this out. Right, science among I mean, other philosophers people. could have said this, or Zen philosophers in particular, but we had no concrete place to put it. I mean, we didn't have the real information. This was a philosophical statement that was sound, but the physicist is able to demonstrate. Well, I think we're doing the same, we're making the same error which a lot of New Age people make, which is no matter how little we think of science, and, and a lot of people don't think about science even from one day to the next, um, when science comes along and verifies something which our belief system be held dear, it's as if the high priesthood has given a sanction. So even people who, who don't claim to venerate science or, and who, who don't admit that science is their religion still... <coughs> still well, in the first place, science is not announcing this point that I'm talking about. It's uh, not even aware of it itself. Right. Well, that's what I meant about your saying at the heart of science. Like science is not aware of its own heart. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and, and I'm saying it not to give it authority, but to uh, turn science around and, and, and point it the same way as the spiritual quest in general toward this uh, ultimate at the center, which cannot be expressed and give it its credit, not for the sake of those who worship science, because then you would be continuing the, the wrong-headedness, but to, uh, to improve science. Which scientists would you hope would recognize this, and, and what would they do about it, having recognized it? Well, Wheeler has already recognized it now. Uh, that, that thing I've quoted before about the quantum of action being can I quote it? Sure. Change glasses. Now don't tell me I've got the glasses in front of the camera. <laughs> of all the signs that testify to quantum phenomenon as being the elementary act and building block of existence, none is more striking than its utter absence of internal structure and its untouchability for a process that can and does operate anywhere that is more basic than particles or fields or space-time geometry themselves, a process that reveals yet hides itself, what could one have dreamed up out of pure imagination, more magic and more fitting than this? That's pretty far out for a physicist. Yes, but where, where do we go from there? So someone realizes that the quantum of action or the photon or light it does have this fundamental character, but where do we go from there? What, is, what does that mean for us? 
you see now you're typically Western in your question as though you have to go somewhere else. It's right here now. Now is the most Zen thing there is. You can't pin it down. You, as soon as you say this is now, then it's not now. Uh, is there any place to go? The thing is to get things here. <laughs> Science has built all this structure, all this out there-ness, and telling us about how objective it is. Well, you can't get here from there. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess what I'm wondering is what sort of change will it, will it bring about this recognition? I mean. Is, uh, that's what I meant by where where do we go from here? Is what what sort oh, of oh, what sort I of heard. change will will it make in our consciousness, or should it make in scientist consciousness? I mean, scientists are still going to be going about their scientific method and still going to be performing experiments and trying to expand the boundaries and fill in the holes in their edifice. Well, uh, that's not really ans- uh, not really answering your question. I think science would be greatly improved by. Uh, getting a better understanding of, of the photon and the uh, primary processes in these terms than it does in its current uh, language of having to talk about forces doing to being due to particle showers and all these things. I see. So it'll even help them on their own ground? I would think it would help them on their own ground. But I think it's, it's, uh, if, if you're going to say anything is needed, I, mean, I would say some kind of spiritual nourishment is needed today. I mean, if you say that isn't uh, necessary, well then I would say other reforms are less needed. Would you expect the scientists to come out with, with spiritual statements that would actually provide nourishment for people? I mean, do you think that this statement of Wheeler's that you read well, is nourishing? Well, I think nourishing? the most nourishing statement you can have is uh, that you have free will and it's up to you. You have uh, all the freedom you can carry. You're not under any imposition of laws. Now, maybe that's not what people want. I remember uh, I asked one student uh, what his definition of freedom was, and he said it's uh, it's not having to make up his mind. Yeah. (laughs) Well, freedom uh, to not choose. uh, Eric Hoffer said that when people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's another thing. The cult of originality has resulted in everybody imitating each other's originality. I mean, it's not, if you call it being original to imitate somebody else's originality, you're defeating yourself. This is another Zen kind of point. Mm -hmm. Ruth, my wife, uh, would paint pictures in the gallery, like the museum, I mean, uh, uh, the museums, one in Washington, Mm -hmm. one in New York, and people would pass and uh, say to her, you shouldn't be copying things, you should be original. (laughs) Well, that's uh, hopeless, I'm I'm afraid. If that's their idea, I mean, of course people should be original, but you don't get original by uh, not being. You avail yourself whatever you, you can use. The originality comes of its own accord. Mm -hmm. You don't try to be original. One of the lines in the I Ching is that the the superior man, when he sees good, he imitates it. Mm -hmm. And when he has faults, he rids himself of them. Mm -hmm. them. Well, I think one of the most original schools of any that I know of are the the Etruscan art. And they were imitating the Greek vases. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't help but be original. Well, that's the other thing, is that novelty can't help but happen in a way. Yes, and, and that's the way it should be. If it were forced to happen, it wouldn't be novelty. 